Okay, we're going to get started at 6 o'clock. If um, other people decide to jump on in, um, they are able to hop into the waiting room and they'll come right back in. So, um, welcome everybody. My name's uh, Jenna Ellis. I am the program director and physical therapist for Primal 7. This is our live movement workshop for the push up and the row. Um, if you haven't joined us at all before, um, welcome. A little bit about me I've been practicing physical therapy for over 10 years now, mainly in the orthopedic setting and in a clinic and in uh, the home setting as well. I've uh, seen patients from three to 103 and um, mainly seeing post-op patients, but also with people that have everyday uh, aches and pains and lumps and bumps, stuff like that, um, just so I can get them back into the game of life, basically, without any aches and pains. Um, so the purpose of tonight's movement workshop is just to go over the push-up and the row. It's two essential movements that we do use in um, our Primal 7 program but also you can use them in your individual workouts if you're programming for yourself. So we're gonna go over and make sure you can feel comfortable in them, uh, little tips on things to do and to not to do, so you can be more proficient at these movements and avoid um, injury and other weird alignment things. So uh, with respect to our band tonight, with the push-up, everybody's gonna be a little bit different. So. With my push-up band, I'm going to have it about, it looks to be about a two, to two to three inches off the ground. Um, if you want more support, you'll raise the band up higher. If you want less support, you'll raise the band down lower. Um, and then also, if you have it rigged in the door, it's more comfortable to place it around your hips. You'll get a better angle of pull than if it's at your chest. If you've got it hanging on a... Um, a pull-up rig um, at your home or a gym, something like that. When you get into the band, make sure you walk your body all the way underneath of, of the anchors so that the straps are straight up and down parallel with each other. And you'll have it either at your hips or at your chest. For tonight's demonstration though, we are gonna use it in the door at the hips. So without further ado, we'll get started. So the basic format for this is with the push up We'll go over, um, I'll show you how the movement works, and then I'll stand back up and we'll do a little bit of just working through some kinks. I'll tell you exactly how to get in and out of the band, uh, hand placement, leg placement, alignment, everything like that. If you'd like to follow along with that little um, tell part, think of it as show and tell. I'll show you and then tell at the same time. If you wanna follow along with that, awesome. Um, right after that little show and tell part, we'll go into a live Q&A. So if you guys have any questions, I'll take questions right away on the push-up and we can problem solve wherever you guys need. And then um, I'll put everybody on mute then again, and then we'll transition to the row and we'll do that same format, just so you guys kind of know what's going on tonight. So without further ado, we'll get started with our push-up, okay? All right, so I'm going to walk the band out here and then crawl my way back to the door and again i'm just going to show you five push-ups and stand up and we'll show positioning etc okay okay so that is push-ups so first thing we'll do here is talk a little bit about alignment. So alignment, if you're in your primal lean, getting set up for a squat, um, a push-up, lunges, anything like that. We've always said that if we were to put dots from our ear, our shoulder, hip, ankle, and our knee and ankle, they should all line up. So all the joints of the body are stacking one on top of the other, so we're in good alignment, better position to start moving. Same thing with our push-ups. Although the angle is gonna be decreased because we're basically in a pit plank position on the floor, we still want those, all those points to line up so we're in good position to start our push-up. Next thing, we'll go over head placement. Gently tuck your chin in. Don't be looking up like this or looking way down like this. Pick a spot maybe about a foot and a half in front of you, 
gently tuck your chin and have your eyes looking forward that way. Next thing is we're gonna go with shoulder position, shoulders down and back. Your hands then will be a little wider than shoulder width apart. Hands will, the finger, the thumbs will kind of be facing each other. Index fingers will be pointing towards the wall as straight as you can get them. With respect to your hands, the wider you spread them, the more base of support you're going to have. Because we're in a push-up just like this, there's not a lot of points touching the ground. So balance might be a little bit tougher here. So the more you spread your hands, the easier it will be. All right, then tuck your tummy in nice and tight. Think about zipping up your abdominals like you're trying to get into a really tight pair of jeans. That um, is a good analogy to be able to zip those abs up and stay nice and tight. Squeeze your butt and then your feet will go a hip width apart. Okay, so we'll come into the band together if you're following along with me. So band will start at your hip. We'll walk back here. Get my feet all the way up to the door, feet hips width apart. Now, my hands are a little wider than shoulder width apart, but my wrists are stacked kind of underneath my elbows and my shoulders. Chin slightly tucked, shoulders down and back. My butt squeeze, my abs are nice and tight. Okay, from here, we're gonna lower down, pause, push back up. Okay, let's do four more. Down and up, down, pause, and up, down, and up, two more, down, and up, last one, down, and up, perfect. Okay, let's go over some things that aren't the perfect alignment or things not to do basically when you're working with a push-up. Like I said earlier, with respect to our chin, we don't want to be looking all the way up like this. So I'll show you what happens when I'm looking up. So my shoulders start to roll, my back has a bad bend in it, overall not good. Then if I'm looking down this way, what happens is my chest and my head are gonna hit the floor first and my butt's kind of sticking up in the air. So gently tuck the chin, looking about a foot and a half ahead of you, down, whole body comes as one, and then back up. Next thing we'll look at here, our shoulders and our elbows. When you're doing a push-up, there's a lot of times where our elbows kind of flare out to the side, or our elbows are in so tight, we're doing a military push-up and it's right next to us. For tonight, I want you to think about if you were to take a two liter bottle of club soda, and place it in between your side and your elbow, okay? Squeeze that club soda in between your elbows and your side. It automatically activates your shoulders to go down and back in that position. So your shoulders or your elbow is about right here. Not here, not all the way at your side, right about here. Think of that two liter of soda, okay? So then if we put that into our push up down and up, it puts our shoulders in a much better position to be able to hold us. So one thing that I do see that is wrong is when people come down into their push-up, look what happens to their shoulders. Elbows flare up and their shoulders round down. Not a great position. So squeeze shoulder blades down and back, push up. Again, no rounding forward, keep them down and back, okay? All right, so now we're gonna go into talking a little bit about our wrists with our push-ups. Um, a lot of people have issues with their wrists and putting a lot of weight through them. What I've found over the years is that if you stack your hand, basically underneath your elbow and your shoulder, it's a better line of um, basically stress going straight down. If I come out here, it changes that and makes it worse on your shoulders, elbows, and hand. But if you come way back here, it makes it even worse too, getting a lot of strain through that um, wrist. So make sure they're stacked one on top of the other. Another option if you have arthritis of the wrist or um, I myself have broken my each wrist once, so sometimes I have some issues there as well, you can grab hand weight, okay? And I'll show you this way. And you can stack your wrist one on top of the other. 
like this so your wrists aren't bending. So I'll get into position here and show you with the uh, weight what it would look like. I'm coming down and up, down and up. And my wrists are staying nice and straight and I don't have all that excessive strain on my wrist when I push back. So that's using the uh, weight. So the next thing we'll go over with a push-up. Sorry guys, push-up's a little bit, uh, there's a lot of stuff moving around with a push-up. Um, so the next thing we'll go over is keeping your abs nice and tight. When you start to lose your abs, I come into like an upward facing dog type thing. And notice all the little dots that we talked about with alignment earlier are not in alignment. Same thing goes with our butt. If our butt's not squeezed, we kind of stag down, okay? So squeeze the butt, abs are nice and tight, nice and active in your shoulders to stay in that plank alignment. Other things that you may notice too, with respect to a push-up, sometimes we have our band set a little bit too high, or we might be walked out a little bit too far away from the pull-up rig or our door. So it might look like this. Our push-up is here and our butt goes flying up in the air. So we don't want that. So make sure you're all the way back against the door or directly underneath your uh, primal seven or the um, anchors and come down, press those hips into the band, and then push back up. Or if, if it's actually the band that's too far up, just lower it down a little bit, and it'll give you a little less resistance when you go down and up, but you're gonna be in proper form, okay? All right, so I think that is it. Oh, the last thing is just make sure you have equal weight on both hands, so you're, you're pushing with equal force through each arm, okay? All right, so we'll go into a little Q&A if you guys have any questions. Um, I'll unmute people and see if you guys have any questions at all about that. Let's see here. Okay. All right. Does anybody have any questions about the push-up in general? So big things with this push-up while you guys are thinking. Uh, posture is huge. So shoulders need to be down and back. Hands are directly underneath the wrist stacking. Uh, and our hips are pushing into the band. You come down and back up all in one good alignment. We don't want our butt sticking up in the air or our chest flailing or anything like that. So if anybody has any questions, just start talking. Um, if not, then we'll move on to the row section of, um, of our workshop here. Hey, Jenna, how would I know just like feeling wise, because I can't necessarily see myself while I'm doing the push up. what would it mm -hmm. feel like? I was doing it wrong. Are there certain things that like are bad signs or? Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, so what would happen um, if you are out of alignment? Let's say if your hips are sagging, your hips are actually gonna touch the floor before your chest does. And vice versa happens as well. So if your butt sticking up in the air, your chest will hit the floor first. So you want your body, your chest, and your thighs to be gently touching the ground at the same time. Uh, another good way too, if you're still a little bit unsure, if you have a mirror, or you can even take your iPad and switch it to on um, like selfie view. Um, so you can have like a little camera right there so you can kind of turn your head real quick and see, oh yeah, I'm in that good alignment there. Um, and I'm able to uh, see exactly what I'm doing. Um, other things you could look out for too would be maybe if you're putting too much weight on one side, maybe your left side touches down first or your right side too could touch down first as well. So making sure all points of contact are hitting at the same time um, and just remembering your good alignment. And um, if you're still a little unsure, get that video camera out, uh, the iPad or iPhone, and um, you can video yourself or just have it on so you can see exactly what you're doing. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, if not, we will, let's see here. I'll mute everybody again. Okay, all right. 
and now we're going to head over and start um, our row. So with respect to our row, I had my rings up locked just out of the way so they weren't banging against the door as I was showing you guys the uh, push-up. So with our row here, I'm going to push my rings down just a little bit so I have enough room to show you guys. And I'm going to make sure that my rings are spaced equally apart there. All right. Really also a little safety check too with the row. You want to make sure that your straps are locked in the nine hook or else they'll move. So I'm going to take my loop, loop it both straps through that nine hook, and then I will put the safety cover up. And then all I'm going to do is give that one ring a tug, make sure it's in nice and tight. Same thing on the other side, make your loop into the nine hook and then bring that band or the safety cover all the way up. Give that ring a little tug there. Okay. All right. So with a row, I'll again demonstrate here first, do about five reps, and then we'll do a little follow along well uh, as well, and then a few things to not do or what to watch out for. All right. So I'll take my rings here, walk back. All right, so that is the row. So when we first start with our row, we wanna make sure that we're in our primal lean. So we talked about that lean already from our ankle or our ears all the way down to our ankles being in a nice line, all right? So first thing we're gonna do is take the rings. You can follow along if you want or just watch. One ring goes in each hand. I'm gonna walk out till my arms are straight and the straps are straight. And I'm leaning back just a little bit. You can kind of put your feet about hips width apart and just kind of feel what it feels like to be in a little bit of a lean here. Maybe practice your alignment. Abs in nice and tight, zipped up. Let's squeeze nice and tight, shoulders down and back. Chins gently tucked and eyes are looking at the anchors above. So from here, I'm going to take another step forward. Again, hips width apart. And now I'm in a little bit more of an, a, a bigger lean, okay? Again, same things apply. Abs are nice and tight, squeeze your butt. Then I'm going to pull my elbows towards my rib cage evenly, and then slowly come back, okay? I'm gonna do five here. As I'm doing this, making sure my shoulder blades are staying nice and tight, my butt and my abs are squeezed tight. So I'm moving as basically like a plank with my row, okay? All right, so things to look out for with respect to your row. First thing is our eyes. We want to be looking straight ahead at the anchors. If I'm looking too far up, my back starts to arch, and my chest gets puffed up a little bit. So when I pull, I come up on my tiptoes, okay? Make sure eyes are looking at the anchors, chin is gently tucked. I can stay in good alignment then, okay? The next thing we'll kind of go from head to toe here is our shoulder placement. I see this quite a bit in clinic or in a gym. When people go to do rows, they don't stay active in their shoulders. And what I mean active is they're not staying nice and tight. So they'll kind of bottom out or it'll feel like somebody's tugging on your shoulder. So it'll look like this. I'm kind of just hanging on my ligaments here. So my upper back starts to round, my shoulders are forward, not a great place, and I'm very much out of alignment. So to fix that, squeeze your shoulder blades down and back. Stay nice and active, squeeze your butt, okay? That's how to fix it. Then the other end of this is when I'm done with my row, say I'm here and I'm coming back, make sure you stay active. Don't bottom out again. So I'll show you here to here. Don't bottom out. Stay nice and tight in your row, okay? 
All right, so next thing we can talk about with the rows, things to watch out for, is um, making sure that our butt isn't sagging. So instead of being in a nice alignment, it's almost like I'm sitting down into a chair and trying to row. We're not doing chair rows here, so make sure you squeeze your butt nice and tight so you're, again, you're in that good alignment, abs and tight as well. So next thing here we'll go over as well, our weight needs to be distributed equally between our left and right foot. If it's not, let's say I am lift, shifting a little more towards my left, so my left knee bends and I'm really then pulling with my right arm. We want equal weight both sides. One last thing here with respect to foot placement. If you're standing too far upright, we're still in really good alignment here, but when I go to pull my elbows to my ribs, look, I come up on top of my heels and it almost pulls me forward, okay? So we want to get a little bit more into our lean and then pull. So I am almost completely upright here, but my heels are staying flat on the floor. One thing too that'll happen if you come too far up in your row, the bands will go slack and then you'll kind of jolt back in place. Make sure you're pulling evenly and keeping those straps nice and tight so they're not flopping around, okay? So everything nice and slow and controlled, making sure you're in control of not only the primal system system, but also your muscles and your posture as well is really the way to go. All right, so then we'll open it up again for any questions about our row here. Okay, all right. So any questions about how I was doing the row or questions in general about your row maybe that um, you might be having issues with? And again, big thing so far is alignment, making sure all the joints of your body are stacked one on top of the other so that you are in the correct place before you start to actually move. Um, that is really the biggest take home with any of our exercises is making sure your alignment is correct before you start. And if you need to uh, make sure you have a video or a little camera or something handy nearby just to make sure you're doing it right. That's completely fine. Um, it's not cheating at all. Um, I actually do it quite often as well. Um, I have a three-year-old and um, he has been to the gym so many times with me and seen me exercise so much that every so often he'll say, mama, that's not right. So I'll have to quit, you know, check myself too. So <laughs> it's definitely okay um, if you have either somebody look at you or have a video in their handy as well. Okay, all right. Well, if there's no other questions, uh, real quick coming up, we are going to have another movement uh, workshop coming up, two of them in October. Again, we'll go over the lean and the squat, and then also push up and row as well. So over the next month, if you are working on these suggestions and um, still think, eh, I don't quite have it, then if you want to come back and join us as well, please do and have some questions handy. And even if you want to share your video with me and then you show me what you're doing, I can definitely tell you, hey, your band's up too high or hey, maybe you're not engaging your abdominals or something like that. So I can give you a couple little pointers um, best I can. Um, also coming up in October, we have a setup workshop. So if anybody's a little unsure about their setup, or get, just getting started with Primal 7. Uh, we are gonna go over our workshop on how the parts move, how they interact with each other, um, also hanging them, what's the best spot in your house as well. Uh, so we'll have a workshop for that as well. Um, last thing coming up here, uh, a new series that I've done um, kind of in conjunction with our pain series. So the knee rehab, shoulder, neck, um, lower back, stuff like that. I just finished a core stability 
series. So working on not only, normally we think of uh, core as our abdominals right here, but it's actually so much more. It includes um, a few muscles that maybe we didn't even think about, our diaphragm, our erector spinae, our pelvic floor muscles actually as well, our lats, there's a couple more too. Lots more that go into it than just our, um, our abdominals here. So it's a quick series coming up that will help you start in good positions and start learning how to contract and hold your body in proper alignment before we actually start moving and getting into a little bit more strength. So look for that in the next uh, week or two coming up as well uh, that we'll be releasing that. So um, if you guys don't have any further questions, Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I um, hope you guys have a great Friday night and um, a great rest of the weekend. So um, I will see you all next time. Thanks so much. Have a good time, guys.